Anne Lyne today is remembered as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. She is another one of these figures who suffered horrifically during the English Reformation, which was brought around during the Tudor period. She was a tragic victim of Elizabeth I's religious settlement, an attempt to solve a number of serious religious divisions that erupted in England between Catholics and Protestants. The story of Anne Lyne is one in which she went against the rules of her time. Anne believed what she was doing was right, however ultimately she would pay the brutal price at a time of great religious intolerance. So join us today as we look at the story of Anne Lyne, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Anne Lyne is thought to have been born as Alice Hyam and was the oldest daughter of a Puritan, William Hyam, of Jenkel Walden. William himself was the son of an important Protestant reformer who served during the reign of Henry VIII. The grandfather of Alice was mainly responsible for the sale of many previously confiscated monastic buildings and estates. Alice was born around 1563 and at some point in the early 1580s she was converted to the Roman Catholic Church despite her family being prominent Protestants. She was converted along with her brother William and her future husband Roger Lyne. Because of their conversion to Catholicism, both Roger and William were disinherited by their families and Alice also lost her dowry. It was during this time that Alice started going by the name Anne too and she started to turn her back on her old life as Alice. Things would get even worse for Anne as her husband Roger and her brother William were arrested for attending mass and were thrown in prison and were both fined. Anne's brother was eventually released and was monitored heavily by the authorities. However, her husband Roger was banished from England and went to live in Flanders. He would remain in Flanders until his death, however during this time in exile he would continue to support his wife by sending money across to her to ensure she was safe, well fed and had some form of financial support to rely upon. Some of this money that Roger would send was actually received from a small allowance gifted from the King of Spain. Roger would pass away though in around 1594, leaving Anne a widow. Around this time, Father John Gerard, a prominent English Jesuit priest, opened up a house and a refuge to keep Catholic priests safe in. This was an incredibly dangerous thing for Gerard to set up, as the Elizabethan religious settlement forbade any such behaviour. When Elizabeth came to the throne in 1558, her people were intensely divided by religion, with her sister Mary I making Roman Catholicism the official religion of England. However, many people were Protestant following Henry VIII's religious changes and Edward VI. There was a growing number of Puritans in the country as well and Elizabeth needed to find a compromise. In an attempt to bring the different groups together, she came up with the religious settlement. The Catholics were not happy with this settlement and under the previous Queen Mary, they had enjoyed religious freedom. Now Elizabeth though was asking them to change their beliefs or deny their Catholic faith. This caused great outrage and many in England even left to live abroad but some did begrudgingly accept the change. During this time, a number of serious Catholic plots would begin to oust Elizabeth off the throne and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots, who was seen as a potential Catholic replacement. Those who refused to attend Church of England services were known as recusants, and they were forced to pay a fine of a shilling a week for not attending church on Sundays or holy days. Later this fine was increased for those refusing to attend to around £20 a month, which would have been thousands in today's money. Anyone who was found to have been persuaded to convert someone to Catholicism was to be found guilty of treason and could also be executed. These times were incredibly dangerous for Catholics and underground worship did take place as mass was also banned. People like John Gerard who were involved in this underground worship lived very dangerously at the time and hiding Catholic priests was an incredibly dangerous thing to do and something which was liable for someone to be sentenced to death for. The newly widowed Anne Lyne was placed in charge of Gerard's priest house and refuge which was incredibly dangerous. Despite her own ill health, she managed to run the house for three years even whilst John Gerard was imprisoned and thrown inside the Tower of London. He would miraculously escape himself from the Tower of London where he was being tortured. Following his escape, he wrote, After my escape from prison, Anne Lyne gave up managing the house. By then she was known to so many people that it was unsafe for me to frequent any house she occupied. Instead she hired apartments in another building and continued to shelter priests there. One day however she allowed in an unusually large number of Catholics to hear mass. Some neighbours noticed the crowd and the constables were soon at the house. By opening up mass to such a large crowd, 
Anne Lyon was committing an incredibly serious crime, as mass as a service was banned by the religious settlement. The huge crowd had attracted unwanted attention, and as a consequence guards were called. Thanks to Anne's quick thinking, the priest and most people managed to escape, but Anne and another woman, Margaret Gage, were caught and arrested. The priest, Francis Page, managed to slip out using a special hiding place, and Margaret Gage was later released on bail and pardoned. Anne Lyon, however, wouldn't be so lucky. She was sent to the intensely brutal Newgate Prison. She was tried at the Sessions House on Old Bailey Lane on the 26th of February 1601. During her trial, she was weakened by the time she spent in prison and also by fever, but she remained defiant. She told the court that although she had hit a priest, she was only regretful that she couldn't house a thousand more. The judge would find her guilty and sentenced her to death for assisting a seminary priest. The authorities would waste no time with executing Anne. On the 27th of February, a day after her trial, she was taken to Tyburn for her execution. She was executed immediately before two priests, Roger Philcock and Mark Barkworth, who received a harsher punishment, being hanged, drawn and quartered. As a woman, she would be spared this and was just to be hanged. At the scaffold, she repeated what she said at her trial, declaring loudly that, I am sentenced to die for harbouring a Catholic priest, and so far am I from repenting from what I have done, that I wish with all my soul that where I have entertained one, I could have entertained a thousand. As Anne Lyne's body hung from the scaffold and death approached, Mark Barkworth, the priest scheduled to be executed after her, kissed her hand. Anne Lyne was beatified and would later be canonised in October 1970. She shares a feast day with female fellow martyrs and saint Margaret Cliverow, and today she is referred to as Saint Anne Line. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.